This is the series where I investigate, critique, and generally make fun of EA and their building skills. Next up is Granite Falls. Ew! Whether you're roughing it or glamping it, Granite Falls has a variety of sites for you to choose from. Power through your squeamish sensibilities and discover some truly fascinating insects. Experience the true perfection of nature by exploring the lush, beautiful Granite Falls forest. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hi everybody, welcome to Granite Falls. Now of course, since it's EA, we actually didn't get a description for this world. If you look it up, it's just blank. And in fact, all of the houses don't have descriptions either. Let me know in the comments, do any of the other worlds have descriptions in their houses or was that just for Willow Creek? Since this is a smaller world, I'll also review the campground, but we have the Lakeside Retreat, the Forest Hideaway, Riverside Retreat, and Green Getaway. And there's a hidden community lot behind my head here. I feel like all of the houses have pretty much the same name, just kind of recycled over. Forest Hideaway, Green Getaway, like they all sound like the same thing. So forgive me if I get mixed up. Okay, let's plot Princess EA down in the campground and we'll get started. See you there. First up is the campground, and it looks exactly as I expected. There isn't a whole lot here, so I'm gonna see how I can make this interesting. The first thing I do notice is that it kind of reminds me of like a rags to riches challenge. You know, like before you build the house, so maybe you have a barbecue, maybe you have a picnic table, maybe you're using the public garbage can. You know what I mean. And one of my favorite items in the entire Sims franchise is a fire pit. I put them in so many of my Sims 3 houses, and I don't know what it is. I just think it's like a nice thing for your Sims to do. You can eat on it, you can warm up, you can sit there and chat. And in fact, I often end up using it to start start fires. It's one of the easiest ways to do it, but I guess so is the barbecue. Anyway, there isn't much to say about this lot. It gets the job done. You have the horseshoe toss, which is like the new activity with this pack. And I think for only picking five items, they picked the right items. We have to give EA a little credit here because I could totally see them making it so that way you couldn't eat or you couldn't throw anything out. I guess the pack already has enough cut corners to begin with. But yeah, coming back to the campground, I didn't know if I was going to rank it, but I figured that I ranked the parks in the base game world, so I may as well do it. And like I said, it could have been a lot worse. It's it's very simple, it's got everything you need, but it's not pretty or anything, and I would have appreciated like a small building. I know if you walk around the paths, you can find bathrooms and stuff, but it would have been nice to have a little something, even a shed to kill people in. Anyway, I'm gonna give this campground a three, and it's a three notwithstanding. Like I said, I have no bad feelings about this, it's just giving low effort. Kinda like making a Sims video, I guess. Okay, let's jump into the next one. Next up is our first house, Riverside Retreat. It's a similar shape to some of those Willow Creek starter houses, but I do prefer it as a log cabin. The simple shape works well with the wood. Ooh, I like how there's an outside shower. Very rustic indeed. And this lot also has everything you had at the campground plus the house. It's not like they just put a base game house down in the middle of nowhere. Or maybe they kind of did. But I do like how the wood goes well with the foundation. Like the lattice wood with the wood planks. And I do like the red color. I don't like a lot of The Sims 4 colors as I've explained before. But I do like this red. And it goes really nice with the brown and really nice with the outside. I think it fits right at home here. Oh, and we've got the cooler and the card table too. Well, well done, EA. Maybe the roof trim didn't have to be red, but okay, let's jump inside. Okay, so coming in, I'm not thrilled with the modern green counters. I know I always complain about green, and I was gonna lay off it a little bit, but this is just bad. Because look at everything else. It's not really my style, the red plaid, but I do think it looks nice in here. The red plaid goes really well with the wooden chairs, the couch, the rustic coffee table, the old TV, the lamp. Like, I get it. And I didn't think I would get it, but what I certainly don't get is this. And these are island counters, too. Why are they modern island counters? in this rustic kitchen. The fridge being on its own is okay because sometimes in like older buildings or inside of cabins, you don't really have places for appliances. I do like the bed that came with the pack. Like you can't really use it in houses necessarily, but for these kinds of lots and these kinds of cabins and like vacation rental homes, it makes perfect sense. I even like the bathroom. I like the old fashioned toilet. I like how they made it white. I like the painting. I like the towel. I like the sink. Oh, and of course we have the toilet paper hung too high up again. Oh, and I just noticed this detail. Look at there's like an air vent to the bathroom bathroom. I think that's perfect because whether you're showering or pooping, you're going to want to air it out a little bit. Anyway, coming back outside. Well done. I enjoyed this rectangle a lot more than I thought. It's nothing amazing. I just noticed another detail. You got like the buzz zapper light over top of the front door, even if the front door is an interior door. Anyway, like I was saying, I didn't think I would enjoy this house. I thought, oh, it's a simple shape. EA made it. So it's probably going to be miss 
missing things. But in fact, it had a lot more than I expected. Well done. I did not expect this, but I'm going to give this house a six. A six. Well done. It's not a groundbreaking concept or anything, but like I said, they didn't mess anything up. And we've seen them do some doozies before. So now I'm getting a little bit more excited to see what's coming next. I thought it was just going to be ugly fest, to be honest. Next up is Green Getaway. I was expecting it to be green, not brown, but at least it kind of makes sense. But like I said, I don't like when they overdo it. They have brown windows, brown roof trim, brown balustrade, brown walls, brown posts, brown stairs, brown foundation. It's like everything except the door. The only green thing is the games table on the front porch. Now, that being said, this build kind of seems like just a bigger, uglier version of what we've just seen. But I do like how they landscaped with the patio chairs. They've got the nice barbecue. And this one has the cooler at the back and the fire pit kind of over here. Oh my goodness, I think I noticed the same detail with the fan leading into the bathroom. Maybe that means they did well. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let's jump inside. Oh no, this one has the same counters too. This is a very similar floor plan. They just kind of switched out the green plaid with the red plaid. But what I really like is the sitting area. I love the rug. I love this couch. It matches the dresser. And in fact, having the TV and the lamp on the dresser looks really rustic. Very cottagey, a nice detail. But like I said, I don't like these kitchens, but I do notice that at least they're not using the island counters this time. They're still the modern ones. And with this modern sink, I guess if you renovated it, but then why would you pick green? Green plastic counters, my goodness. Looking around, they decorated pretty good. We've got the Caliente sun statue. We've got the bookshelves, poster board, smoke alarm, you know, the basics. Let's pop into the bedroom. They made it a red wooden here. I appreciate the extra touch. And what I really do like is the blinds. These are the first normalish blinds that we've seen. Even Oasis Springs had the weird classic curtains. Okay, let's go into the bathroom. I love the wooden bathtub. I love the wooden sink. I'm not sure how I feel about it with this shelf. Like this shelf is supposed to be up higher, right? Mm, I don't know. And the laundry basket, we didn't even have laundry day, but let's give EA a round of applause. They've never put the toilet paper roll in an actual normal place. I guess it's the first time for everything. Well done. Coming back outside, since it's kind of a copy of the last house and I don't think it did anything innovative, I'm not likely to score it as high. And like I said, I liked a lot of things about the other build and I liked a few things about this build, but like when it comes to the actual house, they took away some of the color. They took away how dynamic it was. And for the shape, like a rectangle shape is stronger when you kind of do it small. When you make a big rectangle, that's when it starts to look ugly and obvious. I did like that red wall though. Hmm. I'm going to give this one a four. A four, my goodness. But I think I'm being pretty fair for Granite Falls. I'm also keeping in mind that this is a very old world. It's the first DLC world that came to The Sims 4. And although it's just a vacation world, you're kind of meant to like stay in these houses and not renovate them. So it's not like a starter house in the base game world. Anyway, we've only got a couple cabins left. So let's jump into the next one. These next two are kind of big. Next up is Forest Hideaway. Okay, this is a little bit interesting. I do see some good and some bad. So let's break it down. Why don't we start with the bad? I don't like how flat the front is. The shape at the back is more dynamic, but like right at the front, it's like how many tiles of just straight wall and the windowing is a little bit off center. But what I really do like about the front is the front door. This is actually two windows and a front door. And in fact, it kind of reminds me of my favorite door in The Sims 3. So well done. I don't like the red landing here, but I do think it's a nice touch of color. I just wish they did red on like the windows or something instead. Oh, and I don't like the balustrade or stairs. Over here, we have a fake chimney, which is a nice detail, but then we get into the whole EA window situation. And I call it the EA window situation. But in fact, if you look at houses in real life, especially on the side, they have windows all over the place. And coming along the back here, I actually really love it. Well done. I love the windowing. It's like they did like an updated modern cabin, but still kept it really rustic and tasteful. I like the hose at the back. I like the landscaping. And I like the outdoor spaces back here. I like the games table on the upstairs balcony. I like the cooler down by the barbecue. And this lot is really nice because you're really close to the fishing spot. But I guess that's besides the point. Okay, let's jump inside. Okay, it's a little bit big and empty for my taste, but I really do like a few of these details. I think it's decently decorated, but my favorite thing is actually this post in the middle of the room. And it actually continues up to the upstairs as well. So well done. I hate this living room. I don't like the modern couch in here. I don't think any of the furniture goes together. I like the fireplace detail. I just think they need to switch out the furniture. And we've seen this before, but EA puts televisions in a way that they could never be plugged in safely. You're either going to chip over the cord and break it or do something. Anyway, coming into the dining room, I hate these lights in the game, but I think this is the best use for them. Oh no, this kitchen is weird. It reminds me of Eliza Pancakes' kitchen, but worse. They have a bathroom towel on the wall. They have white tiles that do not match in so many different places. And these are all island counters too. Why do they keep doing this? Just because you can stick a sink in it doesn't mean you should put it there. And what I don't understand is the old plasticky appliances, but the renovated 
kitchen. At least I think it's renovated. My God. The downstairs bathroom is actually kind of pretty, maybe a little bit more contemporary. I don't like how the tub is on that side of the room. I feel it should be on the other side. And why is this towel hung so low? They finally started lowering the toilet paper rolls, but now they put the towels too low. Do you remember in Willow Creek when they were like 13 feet high? I don't know which one is worse, to be honest. Ew, and I just noticed that one of these chairs is a different color. And in fact, they should be that color. I don't like the black ones. I guess they were trying to match the ugly kitchen island. Okay, let's go upstairs. Oh, but first, I almost missed this bedroom here. So this is like kind of like the parents' bedroom, I guess, and the kids will be sleeping upstairs. This is kind of giving Sims 4 Airbnb bought on Craigslist. The dresser doesn't go with the end tables, which don't go with the bed, which don't go with the chair, which do not go with this mirror. My goodness, let's get out of here. Anyway, as I was saying, let's come back upstairs and we can actually look at another bathroom. Oh, yay. They have the yellow toilet with the green rug. I'm so happy. But jokes aside, this bathroom is a little bit more modern, which is okay because like I said, a lot of these are like vacation residences. So it makes sense that they would have updates. And the toilet paper is hung correctly once again. Well done. And here is the other sleeping space. I imagine putting kids up here just because the way that I always play The Sims is with like a big family. And I know it could be a bunch of friends vacationing together, but I really wish there was something for kids. I understand that there's no toddler stuff because toddlers weren't in the game, but like a little toy chest or just like a little touch of something. Anyway, one last note on the architecture. I really do love this overhang. I love the balustrade looking over from the bedroom down to the kitchen. It's a little bit big, like you could have used a little bit more of this space, but I still think it looks really nice. And it makes sense to have all the big open windows because you want to let all the light in. But coming back out to the front, you remember how I said I don't like when houses look like a face? Well, this looks like a face with four eyes, my goodness. But I do think the front is the weakest part. I think they had a lot of good choices going on. Maybe not the furnishing, but at least it's a good shape. Maybe they should just turn it 180 degrees. I don't know. I think this one's pretty much in the middle. Let's give it a five. There were some things I really liked and there were some things I really didn't like. Like, I still don't understand the towels. I still don't understand the front. And if this is the first DLC world, you could have put a little bit more effort into the builds. But I guess EA needed their money. Okay, let's jump into the last cabin. Oh, God. And here is Lakeside Retreat in all its glory. My goodness. I see we brought back the red I really enjoyed from that first house, but with the really green roof. And in fact, normally I would hate something like this, but I do appreciate it. I appreciate a splash of color in this world because everything has been so wooden. And of course, it's a campground, so you're going to see a lot of wood. But, you know, you can make wood interesting colors. Like, you can paint it, right? But even the roof, I think, is supposed to be like sheet metal. Anyway, looking around, it does look like a giant EA box, doesn't it? But there's a few fun things about this shape. I do like how they have balconies kind of tucked in, so the house itself is not a box. It's just the roof from the top down, right? And it also covers the balconies. I actually love the balcony over here. I think it's the perfect size. It's a little bit big and bulky, but again, when you add lots of little details, like the posts, the windows, the seating area, it kind of brings it all together. And going around, what I've noticed is that the windowing and the doors are very symmetrical and balanced. I don't think they always all need to be lined up, but for a big box like this, it does help a little bit. In fact, it makes it look a little bit more like a community lot. Okay, well done. And I love the little stair detail too. It just adds that little extra touch. But I don't like how the Sims 4 build mode makes it so that way there has to be a post there. But irregardless, okay, let's jump inside. In fact, let's enter in first person. So you come into this entryway and it's really well decorated. It's simple, but it makes sense. You've got the table, you've got like the boots, you've got the coat. I would have maybe stuck a chair, a bench, or an ottoman or something. Let's go in this door. What's in here? Oh, it's one of the bedrooms. We've got a desk with no chair. But again, that could make sense for a vacation lot. The bed's a little bit whimsical for me. It looks like it should be in Realm of Magic. Or the fairies pack that's not coming. Anyway, let's not talk about it. This bedroom is not super furnished. I'm going to go top down again. Again, basic Sims bedroom. And I don't understand why they need this many lights. Like, why do you need the wall lights and the lamps? And why is there a smoke detector in this room? Maybe something can catch fire in here. I don't think so, though. Let's go into this, like, master ensuite bathroom. It's nothing special. I appreciated how they tried to, like, mix in the standalone sink with the counters, but it didn't really work. The hand soap, which is nice. The towels are folded on the counter. That's nice. At least they're not hanging up near the floor. Oh, the ugly bamboo blinds I don't like. Okay, let's get out of here. What I really appreciate is the realistic closet space. Instead of making the room super big and empty, they added in like a little utility room here and a storage room over here. Oh no, they forgot one of the wallpapers. That's okay though, it's in a closet. At least you can kind of make it make sense. Okay, here's a beautiful grand kitchen. They've got a lot of decoration here. It isn't exactly the way I would have done it, but it's not bad. I really like the stove hood with the counters. These are nice counters, my goodness. They should have used a nicer fridge though. And I really like how the coffee maker is pointed out towards the seating areas. That way you can make coffee without going all the way around in the kitchen. And although it's a little bit inefficient, the island is in the perfect place. It's the perfect size. It's a little bit big, but this is like the man 
mansion vacation home, right? In fact, the interior of this is giving land grab. I like the living room. Most things match. I don't like the rug though. The dining room is fine. Well done. Even a dining hutch. Let's go upstairs. Okay, up here, we've got another several bedrooms and a couple bathrooms too. The bathrooms have pretty much the same stuff as the downstairs bathroom, but I really like how they laid them all out. Maybe they all didn't need the tub shower combo thing, but I do like how they used all the same counters, the same sinks, the towels, the toilets, that kind of a thing. I would have made one with just a shower, one with just a bath, and one with both. And yeah, if we look around, there's another six sleeping areas up here, so you could fit eight sims in this lot. And I know that EA is guilty of building bigger houses than they need, but this is kind of the perfect size for eight sims. You have some open space so that way they can get around. The stairs are two tiles wide, two kids, two singles, and then two double beds too. So it can work for all sorts of families. And for my final note, I like how all the walls are very cohesive. Like there's like the nice walls and then there's like the bathroom walls. And they separate the rooms with colors still. Like you have the kids room, which uses kind of like one of each swatch here and then the green carpet. So it's like all the colors and that makes sense for a kid's room. And you got brown beds in here. You've got the red bed here and downstairs it's blue. And you know me, I love when they color coordinate things like that. It's just easier to kind of know where you are, especially when all of your walls are brown like this. Adding color to your objects can really help you differentiate which room you're in. Anyway, coming back outside, to be honest, when I started this episode, I was expecting to come in and be able to start screaming and start hating things and find all sorts of problems, but I was pleasantly surprised. And this is definitely the strongest. From the thumbnail, it was hard to tell, but the shell is pretty dynamic. I like the balconies. I like the foundation. I even like the red and green, even though it's kind of like Christmassy. Maybe it's because it's November. But yes, well done, EA. I'm going to give this one a nine. I gave a Granite Falls house a nine. Oh my God. Let me know in the comments. Did you know that this house was this good? Have you even been to Granite Falls? I've only been here a couple times and that was years ago. And I always play with poor Sims. So I would have stayed in the campground or the cheapest house. I think that's the way a lot of people play. Okay, so don't worry. We've got one lot left and it's kind of like the secret hidden community lot. So let's grab Princess EA and let's go. And last but not least is the Granite Falls Forest. Now I know it doesn't look like it, but there's actually a building on this lot. But starting with the front of the lot here, I really like how they have the washroom thing right on the lot. Because sometimes in Granite Falls, you kind of have to run far away from the lot to be able to use the bathroom. Unless you're on your home lot, I guess. There's lots of places for your Sims to sit down and play games and roast marshmallows and stuff. And that's good too, because when you have a bigger lot like this with lots of furniture, it's more likely that the Sims will actually use them. Because if you notice with some community lots, a bunch of Sims will just stand in a clump and kind of chat with each other. And that's usually because there's nowhere for them to go. Anyway, this lot is very big and it's kind of laid out like this is the park for Granite Falls. And I know it's a forest and they did a really good job at making it look like a forest with all the trees, but it's not as inspiring as the parks in Willow Creek or in Oasis Springs, if that kind of makes sense. And we're coming up on the log cabin here. In fact, it's got a really nice shape. I love the tower. I love the roof. I know it's the color of baby poo, but it goes really well with the wood. And I also really appreciate the outside wood here. They didn't use this for any of the other houses, but maybe they should have. It kind of looks expensive. And I also really like how they use the windows that actually have the shutters and they're pointed all in the right way. Well done. I'm shocked. And then coming around the back here, this is actually the front door. It looks like, I guess if it's in the middle of the woods, it doesn't matter. But all I know is that princess EA spawned over here. So I guess that's neither here nor there. Okay. Let's jump inside. Beautiful shell. My goodness. Oh, wow. Look at this little ranger station with all the aquariums. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but I do you understand that these are some things from the pack because you find the insects, you find the herbs and stuff. And in fact, you make the herbalism things on top of the barbecue and all these lots have had a barbecue, I think. I don't love the curtains, but I do like the industrial counters because I never really know where to use these because they don't really belong in kitchens, even though they've got the frying pan on here, but I think it really suits this type of build. Well done. And there's even a cute little bathroom. Oh no, they hung the toilet paper too high. I thought they were going to get a perfect score for that. My goodness. Just kidding. Okay, let's go upstairs. It looks like the second floor just leads up to the third floor and you actually have a seating area up here. I'm not sure what else you would put up here, but it's nice to have something because again, if you don't have objects there, your Sims are not going to walk up there or even the Sims who are just visiting. So this is nice just to have like a little bit of movement at the top. And as we come to an end, I'm just starting to notice that there's a lot of good build items in this pack and I've definitely overlooked them because they're just not my style and they wouldn't belong in the kind of houses that I usually build. But in these cabins, I like the wooden details. I like how rustic they are. I like the plaid. And with this being the first game pack, all the objects kind of go well with the base game stuff. Because as time has gone on and things got more modern and more contemporary, we kind of lost that base game aesthetic. And thank goodness. But if you know what I mean, some of the newer objects don't really go well with the older ones. But since this is an older pack, it kind of worked out. And I thought it was pretty cohesive overall. But yeah, it's a good park. And
and it's got a creative little shell because sometimes with parks, you can get really lazy. Sometimes I'll just put plants everywhere and then like a bathroom. But this is a nice little touch. And I do think that this is one of the best community lots that we've seen in the series. So we'll knock it up a point for that. I'm going to give this a seven. The Granite Falls Forest got a seven. Like I barely even remembered that this place existed. And I certainly didn't remember this tower. But yeah, we got a bunch of pleasant surprises, didn't we? So let's just get a good view of the forest here. Say bye to Granite Falls, everybody, because at the end of the day, you may never see this place again. Well, that does it for Granite Falls. What did you guys think? I was very pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I was expecting it to be awful. I was expecting like those Willow Creek starter houses all shabby and weird with all these little mistakes, but they really stepped it up for this one. But at the end of the day, this is only four houses, four and a half if you count the park. But it's good to see for the first time in history that EA cut back on quantity, but actually increased the quality. Not the game pack itself, but the builds. And yeah, I remember building in Granite Falls a few times just so that way I could send my Sims to my house in the vacation world. But I don't think I did renovations. I think I just bulldozed one or two of them just to make my own. So I've barely seen this before, but it was nice to explore them. But anyway, that does it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And for those of you wondering why I did Granite Falls next, I just decided that I'm going to do all the worlds in chronological order. Now that being said, the new for rent expansion pack is something that I'm considering buying. EA and YouTube are tricking a bunch of people into being excited for it and I might be falling for it. I don't think I'll enjoy the gameplay, but I love apartment life in The Sims 2 and I really love the concept of building my own apartment building. And I figured if it's popular, then I may as well do a deep dive into the builds as well. So as I was saying, we're going to go chronologically, but I might pop the new expansion packs in there as we go. I say expansion packs because I'm scared that EA is going to throw a few more at us. Anyway, I guess that means the next episode is going to be Windenburg. But Windenburg has the most lots and most of them have builds on them. So I'm going to take my time and make sure to do it justice. Anyway, Princess EA and I are out of here. So we'll see you in the next one. Boom.